that is the what I call it. So loud. So today, we're here to discuss Warranty, the Warranty Festival of Leopard and Robertson and Kane. Now, ah, uh, Rose is looking at me like, that's not a funny joke. I know Rose, I'd much rather be in the water. What's this? We should move on? <laughs> She's getting sleepy, we better get started. So, Warranty item number 183. Now, the reason I'm skipping to this warranty item is because I'm sick of reliving this shit. So, what I'm going to do from now on is, as I track over things, Talisha can film them and I'll summarise them um, and really include archival footage and we'll start small and get to bigger things because bigger things take a lot more time to compile all the footage and edit it together in a constructive way. And hopefully in the meantime, they decide to do the right thing. So this in front of me is a brand new Type 2 Raymarine Autopilot. This was dropped off, I mean installed, by Raymarine yesterday. What this situation illustrates on a very small level is why the warranty procedure doesn't function and is absolutely not in the interest of the end consumer with the way living aboard a boat works. I'm sure if your boat sits there for most of the year in a marina or whatever, it's a different situation, but everything I talk about is in relation to liverboards and the implications choosing a warranty and a hull has on your life. So this, this type two autopilot it comes with a, a sprocket which goes to the chain behind your helm and controls the rudders. So to the best of my Google research knowledge, um, this is a Martin stainless steel sprocket, uh, stock bore sprocket. Now it has a cutout for a keyway in the sprocket. So warranty item num number 183 was officially submitted on the 28th of the 11th 2021 to Leopard and what was happening was the original Type 2 autopilot unit was moving under operation and making quite loud grinding noises when it operated. You were still in Cape Town at the time, right? Yeah, I was in, yeah, this is in Cape Town. The problem was, is the A470 bolts that hold this autopilot on through this bracket. So this bracket mounts to there on the face of the autopilot. So that's the mounting bracket there. You see that up? So that's a solid stainless steel folded mounting bracket. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, a470 bolts were mounted through these two here, which look like this, and one was stripped, so the thread was stripped. Now these are bolts that we've changed out. We actually changed these out in Cape Town and they're A480, so they're te technically on paper supposed to be stronger, and they've actually done very well. They, they, they can take a lot more torque than in my opinion, what an A470 bolt would take. The two original bolts 
one was not looking too good and the other one was just outright stripped. So it didn't matter how many times you turned the nut, you couldn't put pressure on it. So the entire autopilot for all the test sailing was running misaligned. Now, it was extre It was quite noisy at the time, far more noisy than other autopilots we tested on other boats to, for, for a comparison. As we transferred the boat, so once the boat was finished, we transferred the boat from Cape Town to Europe. The autopilot got more and more and more noisy. And it got, it got, it, it, in the end was so noisy, we we're all sleeping with earplugs because it was just grinding under, under load mainly. Uh, and that's not, that's like ambient noise. That's like not turned up or edited. You could hear the noise of the autopilot very clearly from over outside. the sound of the engine. Yeah, from, from like standing outside the boat. You yeah, you could hear it anyway. in here. So we upgraded their bolts. Um, I think they put, they installed it, lined it all up with our bolts. They lined everything up because my steering was never aligned either from handover. Uh, and somebody put their foot through the, the um, Raymarine rudder sensor. They climbed in and out the engine bay from handover. Someone had obviously trod on it. Like there's no other way it could have had the downwards pressure to bend the whole thing and partially rip it out the fiberglass. So the new sensor was put in, but it was never programmed for, for center of the steering wheel. Uh, the steering, steering wheel was also replaced because there were three cut marks on it where somebody had unwrapped the leather steering wheel using a Stanley knife and cut through the leather steering wheel cover from handover. So they replaced the leather, leather steering wheel, um, which I'd highly recommend because I think it's locally made in uh, Cape Town if you take that option because uh, it's quite nice to use and it seems to be reasonable quality. I would say though that you need to change out the bolts in the face of it to marine grade uh, in hex bolts because mine were not marine grade. Now, digressing. So the sensor had someone put their foot through it. They argued and argued and argued about the sensor. They said, no, 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 it's just not screwed in properly. Oh, there's nothing wrong with it. This one, it's one of these things that goes back and forwards and back and forwards and back and forwards over something that's so inexpensive to a big company. It's absurd. So then we went test sailing, test sailing, test sailing, and then the sensor completely failed and would not work. So they wasted my time arguing, and then it broke anyway, much like all the other things that broke that I brought up when they were half broken. That was replaced. So the team came out, they rebolted the autopilot, it was completely misaligned, so the pressure was not on the autopilot correctly, and the chain was misaligned. What ended up happening is obviously there's some sort of damage inside this. I didn't open it up because it's new and under warranty and I shouldn't have to deal with this shit with a new boat. It was downwind sailing. Uh, it's not easy on an autopilot, I've been told. I don't really know. I'm not, an I'm not an engineer of autopilot internal components. I don't even know what you call them. Um, back, to, back to what I do understand and can comment on is this. So this sprocket, Martin stainless steel sprocket, uh, just just off offhand from uh, Motion Industries, it's 171-ish US dollars uh, plus shipping. So it's not a cheap sprocket. It's it's about 30 US dollars for the carbon steel version. Now somebody, somebody since you can't make accusations because nobody's quite sure whether it's Leopard or or. It's like someone with a rogue spanner or Robertson and Kane. Anyway, someone before I had the boat handed over to me drilled two holes through this sprocket and then tapped them for these two grub screws. That I know for a fact because these sprockets don't come with holes drilled through them that are not even centrally aligned to the shaft that they're clamping down on. Why these two grub screws are here is the problem. Now, once you tighten all of this autopilot up, you put uh, bolts in that can have an increased torque on them that are also marine grade, and you perfect, perfect your alignment, and everything's lubricated, and everything's running like a clog. You're left with one of these BS warranty situations that if you buy one of these boats, has a high probability of frustrating you. In our opinion, this is from an external supplier, not made by Robertson and Kane. So if there's a fault with this, I've got to chase up whoever manufactured this. But this wasn't drilled out poorly by the original supplier. 
it was drilled out poorly by somebody that nobody will tell me who it is. Then it was tapped poorly because the threads are incredibly shallow, especially on this hole here. So it's very difficult, almost impossible, to keep the grub screw tight on the shaft, even with Loctite 273, or some sort of red Loctite variant, which is what they filled this entire thing with, which is why it took the Rain Marine technicians almost an hour to get it off the original autopilot, to the point where they're almost considering leaving it here and making us get it off, because it was so absurd filling this with red, some sort of red thread locking glue adhesive. So. First issue, this, this is where owning one of these boats just gets absolutely ridiculous. So the first issue is the grub screws won't tighten up on the shaft properly. The second issue is that this keyway, this key on this keyway on this new Raymarine autopilot, which is identical to the previous one, if you put this sprocket onto the keyway, you'll notice something interesting. So if you come down here, you'll notice a massive gap and discrepancy with the size of the keyway in the Raymarine autopilot shaft, which is a standard manufactured keyway that goes, and key that goes on the, is, is the same on every single one of these Type 2 autopilots. And whoever did it, I don't know if it was Martin who made this sprocket or another person that handled it after it was got from Martin. Um, it might have been done at the same time as these grub screws. Nobody will ever know. You'll never know because they'll never admit who's at fault. What you have is an unacceptable situation from anyone with a basic understanding of engineering that when there's a high torque and pressure from rudders and the boat sailing, you've got two different size keys that don't line up with each other. So you ask, how do they get away with this? Well, what their solution is, is they send one of these grub screws home through this poorly cut thread as hard as they possibly can into here so this goes in here. So if you come down here now, what they've done is they've drilled a grub screw and tapped a grub screw through so that the grub screw forces itself into the corner edge and the top of this key. Now, if it turns that way, it's supported by the key. If it turns this way, You've got the, the small edge of the grub screw. You've got the small edge of the grub screw chewing out the keyway, and you've got this movement here. You've got a 1.8 millimeter variance on something that's like it's just crap. Obviously, it's, it's not fit for purpose because it's come loose twice. Um, that's not what damage the the drivetrain in here. What 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 most likely in our opinion and the opinion of the Raymarine technicians, which is two different lots of Raymarine technicians have looked at this now, is the all of the early hours of sailing with this unit loose because the bolt was stripped that keeps it aligned on this bracket, keeps the sprocket aligned, uh, putting where on this on this unit on the wrong angle. Raymarine said they would change it in Gibraltar but they couldn't get a new unit in in time because we had to come to Europe to collect all of our stuff which we got out of inbound because it sat there so long because we got stuck in Cape Town. But the Italian Raymarine service center in Trieste have said is that because this is not a suitable sprocket for this shaft for the reasons I've shown you the way that they've installed it anyway and the fact that the bolt was stripped and the unit was misaligned and used misaligned it's actually the the installer, the shipbuilder or whoever it is that Leopard slash Robertson and Kane slash friends and family have installing this unit 
it's their problem to replace the autopilot. But if you talk to Leopard, they'll go, oh no, that's an external manufacturer's product. So then you get to have a fun argument with these things, which goes on for weeks, even this time. So it was approved in Gibraltar, but then these guys had to verify and check it all and, dis and look at it all and pull it all apart again, even though it was approved. And I've seen the paperwork for a changeover by a Raymarine technician that was a really good technician in Gibraltar. You've then got to jump through all the hoops again with the next place that you go. And if they said, oh, well, no, we can't get one in, then you get to go to another place, don't you? And you get to have more visits from Raymarine while they argue about who's more incompetent than who. So this is what happens when the manufacturer handballs all of the warranty responsibility to everybody else. You may as well not have one because what a lot of people do is they just give up and just pay for a new unit. So Raymarine, I think corporate and international have been really good about things so far. They've replaced the GPS sensor, which failed. Like, no drama, the product failed. Not only did they replace it, they suggested that where it was installed in Cape Town was not the most appropriate place and we'll, they'll, we can work together and they, they actually took, the rep in Gibraltar took the time to educate us about how you can better lay out your system than how it was handed over to us and what we were told in South Africa. So, and, 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 and they sorted us out and that was fantastic. And now this, ultimately, after arguing for, how many weeks has it been, three? Four. Three or four weeks, we got a new unit. The point is with this, is this is crap. So I don't know how many boats they've done this on because I've not actually analyzed it. You can actually see where all the teeth are scored if you look at the surface from it running misaligned. Because I very much doubt that it was shipped from Martin sprockets like that. So like, to me, to me to make this right, I document this and I send this to Leopard. And to make the situation right, Leopard should express post one of these, or Robertson and Kane, I don't really care, or, or, the, or someone's auntie, I don't really care, that's involved with their conglomerate, should express post one of these out to me, DHL, or similar, with no BS, because it's their fault that it's stuffed. They should provide a new keyway, a new, like a new, they should provide a new sprocket that hasn't been side-loaded and have the teeth chewed out, with the appropriate or pay for someone, like they should just have a slush fund to just pay for incidentals, like somebody machining out the appropriate width keyway on one of these, you can come around here, on one of these sprocket blanks. Like you can get them as a blank without a keyway. So there should be a properly aligned retaining screw. There should be a properly machined keyway fly landed on me. A properly machined keyway on the sprocket and it should just be set up properly, not oh this is too wide so we'll drill a grub screw sideways and put through the through the Martin logo so I mean don't think Martin did it. Yeah I'm no I'm no uh I'm no marketing expert, but that doesn't seem like a smart yeah, choice. I, I'm no, I'm no Sherlock Holmes, but Martin wouldn't engrave their own logo onto a product and then put a crooked grub screw through it. The joys of living on a hard stand in the heat, where if you don't open all, where if you, you have to have all your windows open all day long in 36 degrees, or you cook, so your entire boat fills with bugs and crap, and there's nothing you can do about it, because you get a boat that isn't fit to sail around. It's, it is the most f***ing absurd shit show I've ever lived through or even contemplated how idiotically convoluted all of this is to avoid basic customer service. Yeah. Like, the amount of time and infrastructure and money they must waste screwing around 
over something worth a hundred bucks to them in a business. Yeah. And anyway, so this thing, so now I've got to make this work or I can't go anywhere. So, because I have to leave because you have a visa when you're living aboard on a boat so you can't just sit in one place until they decide to authorise you, warranty you, you have to move the boat. And we so, can't get another one of those because it's an American sprocket and I can't find anyone who will ship it to Europe. Yeah. Fit these, fit these two pieces together and make them work. Um, now, which will waste hours of my time. The dark side of the darker side of um, this warranty structure. So, the Axiom 12 Plus in the helm uh, isn't working properly and it's overheating. It's confirmed to be faulty, it's been extensively tested. The Rain Rain technician tested the boat over a week in, Gib in Gibraltar um, and it gets quite hot to touch um, much hotter than the other unit and then it randomly just disconnects the GPS and uh, I won't recognize its GPS and then I won't bore you with all the technical issues. Our parts failed, it's not a software issue. So that's confirmed in Gibraltar and how long ago is that? Two months? Almost three now. Yeah. So they can't get stock of an Axiom 12 Plus and ours doesn't work properly. It constantly boot cycling and doing all sorts of weird things and getting hot. May even develop into a fire hazard. Who knows? Raymarine apparently did not have any in stock to replace it with, to cover their own warranty obligations. I mean, I don't know. It's quite funny when you think about it. Um, Leopard goes, oh, well, Robertson and Kane has the warranty. So then further to that, you then have Raymarine being put forward by Robertson and Kane going, well, actually, the, the, the parts warranty by Raymarine, not by us. Like, it's not like I've gone and bought it from a shop and I have a receipt for the Raymarine product. You actually don't have any proof of purchase for the Raymarine products half the time. You've actually then got to get it back out of Leopard in some form of documentation, which then is cross-referenced. Like, the point that I'm making is Raymarine isn't carrying any Axiom 12 Pluses. They didn't have any two months ago. They don't have any now. These guys have checked. So, your warranty is essentially worthless, especially if it's a system's critical part. Raymarine should have to carry a certain amount of these things in a pile, in stock, and when some customer's unit fails and is confirmed to fail under warranty, it should be immediately sent out. Not, oh, oh, we've got, we've got, oh, shortages, oh, supply issues. Oh, because it's outrageous that I can go down to whatever shops have an Axiom 12 Plus, a lot of them are on special, and go buy one right now. But Raymarine don't have any and haven't had any for two months and can't give me an ETA when they'll have any. So essentially I've got no warranty because they can't replace their faulty product. So what's the warranty worth? Nothing. Like, where's, where's the protection for the end consumer? Like, this is what pisses me off is, let's say it's a, like the wind sensor failed, got full of water. No, another, another story. We'll, we'll address that in another video. Let's say it's a $300 component, is the point that I'm making. Nobody's going to go to court over $300, and that's what these end manufacturers rely on. Everyone just takes it and just puts up with this bad treatment and just goes, oh, well, oh, it can't be helped. Of course it could be helped. Raymarine could buy stock back off the retailers. Raymarine could have stock stacked in a corner to do the right thing by end consumers. Raymarine could... Something could be arranged with Raymarine and Leopard and, and Robertson and Kane, and one of the units they've got sitting in a pile in the factory could get sent out. Instead of the end consumer sitting here on a hard stand in the heat with a faulty mm. malfunctioning unit and then having to use the unit to move the boat because of visa constraints because nobody's got one to replace it with. So you might think you've got a warranty, but you don't. You've only got a warranty so far as somebody has one sitting on a shelf. And if they've not bothered to restock, well, you haven't got a warranty. 
and I don't know what you do. I don't, honestly don't know what you do if you went to, let's just say Italy, and the part was superseded but still under warranty, like they're doing with the Axiom series. That's just flat out, nobody can tell me. <laughs> like I've got an Axiom there and a 12, 12 plus there, and Gibraltar Raymarine said, well, that's been superseded, so I don't know if you'll get a replacement. Like, that's not how warranty works. Like, that means I don't have warranty. You either pay me out, Raymarine, because apparently Raymarine's who's the, the warranty's been handballed to by Robertson and Kane, either Raymarine pays me out, or somebody sends me a new unit. Like, <laughs> now, I don't want to just pick on Raymarine in this video because some of their customer service has been good, really good, especially Gibraltar. Um, here, not so much. I've had to threaten them and carry on and send emails and go to try escalated to Raymarine's head office, and then they did something. They they started sort of doing things. Um, they're more interested in not approving warranties and getting me to pay cash out of my own pocket, and then them telling me that I I can claim it back later. Like that's going to happen. So, <laughs> what a fuss that was. So let's take Jabsco. Because I don't want to just pick on Raymarine, I want to make the point that this warranty system doesn't work. It works if you sit, maybe let's say somewhere that's a world hub, like Fort Lauderdale, and there's massive turnover, massive stock, and blah, 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 and you're not actually cruising around the world as a liverboard cruiser traveling the world and going around the place to other places other than where you bought the boat or handed over the boat. Like, assuming you're using the product for what it's often advertised for, which is remote cruising away from the central manufacturing areas. So, let's take Jabsco. First Jabsco pump. Didn't work, not fit for purpose that came with the boat, was running constantly, wouldn't turn off. Run, 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 get stuck on, have to power cycle it. We li and <laughs> Basically, Leopard Robertson and Kane's answer is, well, it's crap anyway, which it is. It's like such a small unit. It's just not suitable for the boat. Like two people can't shower at once. You can't shower and use the tap at the same time. So their excuse is, oh, well, do you really want another one? I said, you know what? At the time, there was so much bullshit going on. I said, I'll go down to Manex because they give me a great price and great service uh, in Cape Town and I can get a discount and I will upgrade the pump out of my own pocket. Cool. Other things were happening. I didn't want to cause drama. So got the pump that was faulty, threw it at the bin because it was a pile of trash and that's the OEM pump that came with the boat, which was in here. Everybody has one. You can look in that cupboard if you want. You can, but it's not a Jabsco pump anymore. Right, so in there, that's not the Jabsco pump anymore. We'll explain that upgrade later. So, the first pump failed, faulty, went in the bin. Didn't want to swap it for another one and cause drama with Leopard and Robertson and Kane because we had too many other extensive warranty issues getting worked through. So I just said I'd upgrade the pump to something more suitable. So we got a big, twice the size physically of the other pump like a Parmax 4 or something, four, but it was like eight. a high output, heavy duty, top rated one. Put that in. Worked really good for about a day and then failed. So it just, it would just keep running and it just keep going and going and going and going. I said, screw this, I'm not playing this game. I'll take it back to Manex in Cape Town and I'll tell them, and they took it, and they screwed with it, and tested it, whatever else, it, it's faulty. So they swapped the first pump that was faulty. Then we got a replacement of the identical pump, because we're still next to where we bought it from, and they had two in stock. Then we put this new one in, and that ran, that ran pretty well. How long was that new pump running for before it started faulting? Month. Three weeks. Yeah, so da daily use for a month, roughly. Doesn't really matter. So this thing ran daily use for a month. And then it stopped working. It would either stay on and not turn off, or it would not turn on at all, and the tap, the pressure out would just run out. Um, 
but it was none of the plumbing, there was no air, there was no air in the tank, there was nothing else, no other things, no other mitigating factors. Everything was checked. We were checking it with people, I was checking it, he was checking it, we went through all the connections, no vacuum leaks, got other pumps, put them in, they worked, this one didn't work anywhere. So, we rebuilt the pump. There was no lube in it, nothing. We cleaned out all the little, all the little diaphragms and all the little holes in the pump head, put it back together, installed it, worked perfectly for another month. Fucked out again, a month later. Took it apart. I don't know, by this time, were we in the ocean crossing Europe? Something like that. We couldn't take it back at this point because they didn't have any more in stock. So then what they say is, well, you can have another pump that's cheaper and not as good and accept that you're swapping down for a lower model. Now this pump barely serviced the boat. This Parmax 4 HD pump, but by now they couldn't replace it by the time we were leaving at Mannix. They would have to get one in and they couldn't give me an ETA. This is the second pump. They didn't have anything else in stock that was suitable. So we rebuilt the pump, put it back into service and it worked. Then a month later, roughly, it stopped working. We ended up rebuilding this pump like three times or more, I forget, because Tynan was doing it at this stage. I did one and he did the other, God knows how many. And we rebuilt this pump all the way to Gibraltar. Then we got to Gibraltar and it would run for about a month after you cleaned it all out and rebuilt it. So it's just a garbage product. Like, I don't care, like, that particular pump that we got was junk. So, we get to Gibraltar, we say, hi, Jabsco rep in Gibraltar. Um, who's the official Jabsco distributor. Um, this pump doesn't work, we keep rebuilding it. They go, okay. They come out, yeah, the pump's faulty. Right. Because we left it in the faulting state so we could get it sorted out. So, oh no, we can't get that pump. We don't know when it will come in. We can give you this lower model pump that's on the shelf that nobody wants. Oh, okay. Well, that's not what I paid for. That's two thirds of what I paid for. And it's not just that, it's not really fit for purpose. Oh, well, we don't know when we can get a pump in. Sorry. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. So I've got no Jabsco pump warranty because there doesn't seem to be any mechanism for me to get a pump by that pump at that stage from Jabsco. We looked up reviews and we rebuilt the system with one of these pumps. So you just have to adjust a couple of different fittings. When I say rebuild the system, we just adapted this pump into the existing system that was there with the Jabsco accumulator and blah, blah, blah. And it hasn't missed a beat and it's run perfectly every single day with more use than the Jabsco because we're more confident in it and it's not stopped, failed, hiccuped, needed to be turned on and off one time and it's run perfectly and it's better and it's more pressure than the Jabsco and I think the pump's made in Europe or America and we're super happy with it. So if you want to get rid of the junk that's on your boat, whatever it happens to be, this thing is great. I have two because we intend on going remote area cruising and I wouldn't like to try and get this once I eventually do get to Southeast Asia. I wouldn't like to have to try and find something that isn't cheap nasty junk on the shelf in an obscure place. So essentially the takeaway from this is if you were buying a new catamaran and the original manufacturer won't put their name to at the end of the day, at the end of the line, after you've tried every other avenue, won't put their name on paper to say, we'll send you a new pump, buy a different catamaran. Honestly, don't waste time with it. Your life and your time and your money are not worth dealing with these entities and their time wasting, their time wasting systems. So that, that's the takeaway from it. You either accept that you're gonna buy a cheap McBoat and just pay for everything yourself, which, as we're going to illustrate to you in future, is not worth the discount because the bill is astronomical, especially in this day and age. It is not worth that cut the hundred, couple of hundred thousand dollars that you cut off 
buying a higher quality boat from a different manufacturer, it is not worth that money. Especially if you work on your boat or work online or it might, or dealing with this one of these boats for months on end might cut into your earnings. It is not worth it. You think it is, well, but it's not. It's cut into all of our earnings. No, because you buy this boat and you think there'll be a certain amount of problems mm. and there'll be a certain amount of issues that you'll have to address and you might have to address some issues yourself because it'll probably be faster than dealing with the manufacturer. But... 14 months later... It's, it's not. <laughs> it's not. My loss of income is not worth anything they've done for me. None of it. Just that in itself. Just that. My time I've wasted on them is not worth it. And you need to think really, really hard because when you start getting structural issues come up, nobody wants to touch them. Then you're gonna have to get real good at fiberglassing in a hurry, let me tell you. So, um, we just noticed that the hole that the grub screw is machined into, um, well, machined, tapped into, to attempt to cram the incorrectly sized key to one side to stop movement, which is absurd. Um, is stripped, which wouldn't help. Uh, so that would explain why there was massive amounts of Loctite red in there. One grub screw is still tapped, but that one, as you can see, is completely stripped on the contact surface. The outside has a few threads, but if you actually look from the inside, the threads are stripped. If you go to this one, you can see, you can see the threads are still there on the inside. If the autofocus yeah, so you can see those, they're quite shallow threads, but they're still, they're still there. So Talisha, I'll tell the audience what I'm up to. You are fixing your own warranty because Robertson and Kane have outsourced it to owners. So earlier, earlier, um, earlier on Play School, mm -hmm. we were discussing how lovely it is that you get a demo key to go with your sprocket um, which slides on nicely like this and I think I found this in behind the switchboard I think it's a clock it just ticks back and forwards and turns yeah that key way you're fixing it yeah well I thought I could make the clock run better by putting a custom keyway in that I just made from scratch. Oh, that's how you fixed it. No, I haven't yet. You're in the process. And then like, that will go in there like this, mm -hmm. eventually. Mm -hmm. So the microphone on the camera failed. I'll just do a voiceover of what's going on here for anyone that's interested. At the time I was under time constraints. There was no real way to fix the problem or pay my way out of it. I used a battery grinder with a one mil disc to cut the basic shape out of some high grade, high quality, high grade marine stainless steel. Then I used diamond files to cut the final shape, which is like a small L shaped piece that would fit in the gap between the larger keyway on the sprocket and the smaller keyway on the shaft of the Rain Marine autopilot. So I sat there with diamond files and some sandpaper and basically made it absolutely perfect so there was zero movement without the grub screws. Then what I did is I, after cleaning out every single little bit of old thread locker, I used Loctite 243 on the grub screws it's much better now because there's zero movement in the mechanism so having the stripped grub screw was less relevant and the other one held it held it together regardless i locked tight 243 both of the grub screws in and then after that i used loctite 273 just on the top thread just to catch just to keep both of the grub screws in place we also exchanged the, I think it was an A470 bolt that went into the shaft of the Raymarine because we didn't have a torque setting for the bolt that holds the, the washer and caps the sprocket off. So 
we didn't risk snapping it. I put one of our A480 bolts into the outside of the sprocket, which you presumably can have, have a little bit more torque on it. Not that we really torqued it up more than before. It was almost on the verge of snapping and had slight flex in the OEM bolt when it came out because they said it almost broke getting it out. The reason it was so hard to get the original sprocket off, the original damaged autopilot, was not because it was solidly attached. It was because it was so full of red thread locker that um, it had formed like a... There's a groove cut in the shaft and it had formed like a, um, a solid rim in this groove so it would spin sideways but it wouldn't move forward and backwards so basically we had to give them the heat gun and well melt melt this so-called thread locker out so after putting both grub screws in letting the blue loctite set and then putting the red loctite just on the outside of them to hold them in place and winding in the a480 bolt i, I don't think it will ever move just based on the key that I, I, I hand cut with the diamond files and the, the torque from the outer washer and bolt that we put in. This whole process took all day, most of the day to rectify. Um, like no new owner should have to go through, like new owners shouldn't have to go through this crap. And it's not just this, like if it was just this, it'd, it'd be a funny story. It'd, yeah. You'd, you'd, you'd live with it and you go, wow, that was stupid. Like, who would do that? Oh, well, it's a new boat. But the reason I've uploaded just a fraction of the entire day, like this is just a small fraction of the whole day, is there were over a hundred of these items of things like this that are just so absurd. Like, they just there's no excuse for it. Like, there's just nowhere, nowhere in the world where that's an acceptable installation of a gear or a sprocket on a shaft. What it is, is it shows that the person that put it together doesn't understand the implications of what they've done. Because if we weren't onto it and observant to this problem from early on and we just left it and we did an ocean crossing and didn't change any of the bolts, didn't have any spares, and we weren't super careful and understand the gravity of what we're undertaking. I mean, it's highly likely the unit would have failed in the middle of the ocean. At the very least, the chain was coming off because it was so loose because of the bracket movement in the bracket. So let's just say you had no technical ability or knowledge and you bought this as a new boat and you're three weeks out of Cape Town, four weeks out of Cape Town or, or, or whatever it is. Like imagine if you couldn't stop in somewhere or if you couldn't get parts, you had to wait for a month in St. Helena to get an autopilot flown in, if it's even possible. Or you've got to manually steer that boat for two weeks, three weeks, a month or something like that because you relied on your new boat's autopilot to function and someone's just done an outrageous install like in, total, in its entirety when analysed between stripping the bolt and then stripping one of the grub screws and then just wedging it together and just filling it with Loctite red. Like the whole thing is just like, there's just like, if you got bored sitting there through this video, think about me having to spend what's ultimately days and days of my life in total dealing with this warranty issue, whether it's the day that the team came out and spent all day stuffing around on the boat to try and half fix it and change the bolts out or it's the day it had to be tested in Gibraltar and then the next then another day of testing in another day of testing in Italy and then the emails about it like the discussions about it because i mean it, it, you have this happen the first thing that has to happen is leopard has to come out to the boat and see it in cape town then they go that's that's a problem then they t tell robertson and kane and robertson and kane send someone out and then they go oh, that's a problem then Robertson and Kane send another team out at another date and then they go, okay, we're here to fix it. Then they may or may not fix it that day, depending on the issue. And I mean, it goes down the road, down the road, down the road. And then eventually a year later in Italy, the poor workmanship, which would have been there since before handover is resolved in its entirety. Like why wasn't this issue resolved 
in Cape Town when the first team assessed it. Why did I have to dismantle the entire thing and sit, sit with it in front of me and deal with it when there was no longer infrastructure to repair the problem properly? So I had to use hand tools to rectify it. So we're sailing right now at 4.8 knots with the code zero up, 4.9 knots. Um, and the autopilot is on. So the autopilot's on. Up here. And this mic will pick up far more sound than any of the ones that Tynan used on crossing. And you can't hear the autopilot over the, the waves. And it's not particularly rough. Like it's not particularly rough. Now down here, we left in a hurry today. Or you can use a water maker. Down here, you can't hear anything anymore. So I mean, what really, really, really pisses me off is the fact that these guys work on presumably hundreds of autopilots and that was so noisy. Like I'm sitting here now with the autopilot directly above me with no soundproofing because we took the soundproofing out because it's not needed anymore. Like they tell you, oh, this is normal and I had to sleep crossing the ocean. with earplugs crammed so far into my ears it made me it made my ears hurt and they tell me oh that's normal that's normal that's normal so I've spent months and months just putting up with the autopilot going oh geez this must just be a this must just be how it is when you have a boat like I didn't really believe it but you're like oh like there's so much stuff wrong you just pick your battles and then you get to Gibraltar and then the Rain Marine technicians like this is just this is atrocious, like this is just <laughs> I forget the exact words he used, but it was just like, no, this this autopilot's stuffed. And I mean the autopilot's been stuffed since Cape Town. And I just find it disgusting that you suffer through months with no sleep. Like it's just disgusting, like it's just like the behaviour is just like to strip those bolts and have that autopilot just grinding for months on end like it just makes you feel sick like when it's finally replaced in Italy like <laughs> that when you buy a boat to live aboard which is how they advertise these boats like they go to great lengths to try and convince the liveaboard community that this is the right way to go, especially considering how much time they waste on YouTubers like The Winds and Ruby Rose. I didn't buy a new boat and I don't think people reasonably expect to buy a new boat and have to constantly, and I've got Tynan helping me, constantly chase issues and are just, and are just cutting corners and are just just smashing stuff together that then becomes your problem six, seven, eight months later, or maybe even three weeks after handover. Like, all of our plumbing leaking because they had no clips for the quick fittings. And they just go, well, we haven't got any. Like, so the boat's just a, a sieve for fr the fresh water system. So Tynan had to spend, like, days finding every single quick fitting and clipping clips onto it that it took him all of an hour to get from down the road from which is also probably three minutes from the factory like no like I'm I, I'm sick of it I'm sitting here a year later stuff's going out of warranty and we you don't just get to lock up the boat and leave it at the end of the day what I wanted to say is everything in this video is in my opinion and based on our experience I have been on a lot of other leopards because they're all lined up at VNA. And I find it incredibly unfortunate that I don't, 
it's fortunate and unfortunate, but I find it incredibly unfortunate that our experience has turned so negative because while we were in Cape Town, Leopard was going into bat for us and it was blatantly obvious when there was poor workmanship and nobody could argue about it and it was getting rectified, albeit extremely slowly and inefficiently. But now we've left the, now we've left Cape Town. It's just us interacting with Robertson and Kane's warranty department. And I mean, some people just send them bills and they just pay it. Other people send them, like according to what I've read online, other people send them bills and they partially pay it. You don't know what to believe. Everybody has a different story. I mean, maybe it's possibly a matter of they like some people and they don't like other people. Um, I know exactly what it is, but I'm not going to voice it at this point in time. I may in future. I'm not ignorant. I'm just... I'm hoping... I'm actually at this stage hoping most of all that they'll restructure how they do things because I don't think it would cost them a great deal of money to do so and fix, fix the problems at the production stage and if stuff slips through just especially for liverboard owners just fix it seamlessly like you know I guess what all this comes down to at the end of the day is the business that these people are in if they're marketing to liverboard round the world cruises is working hard and achieving your dreams not thinking you've worked hard and thinking you're achieving your dream and then having to fix a boat for a year because like just every day, like yesterday, it was someone had used pliers on a quick fitting for the wash down pump, so for the wash down sprayer, so they were cracked when they're supposed to be finger tight. And then the brass fitting they put in there didn't mate to the O ring, so it didn't seal properly anyway, so it's full of Sikaflex. But inevitably, it being put together as it was never intended has broken it and now it's leaking and it just siphons water down to that point. Like, it's every single day you basically end up rebuilding most of the boat. Overall, like... Now, I thought picking up one of these boats and dealing with South Africans, who I've always got along with really well, would have been a matter of pride for them to sell a product to young people that are chasing their dream and have worked their guts out, and, and they'd want it to be fixed and sorted and they were warned about YouTube. They were warned about YouTube from like point of sale. David was told extensively, I think it's even in emails about this boat will be on YouTube to let yours and Tynan's YouTube stuff. And for them to serve up a boat like this just is just astronomically mind blowing to me. Like, it's, <laughs> I'll even admit it's below average <laughs> for what they produce. What did they, what was the nickname for it? <laughs> the Friday boat. From the Robertson. No, how, you work, you work, you work, you work. You get once in a lifetime money. You're going to live on the boat and sail it around the world and go through storms in it and have to have confidence in it. And then everyone in the marina goes, ha ha, you've bought a Friday boat. But like it's sickening. You... Imagine that. And, it, and they're not trying to... F Leopard was trying to fix it while I was there and now that's it. <laughs> it's like we... I flew into Cape Town with the idea that with, with all the, the people there, like, we'd be able to do, like, a, like, semi-custom boat of our dreams kind of thing. And then what ended up actually happening was just getting bogged down in just massive, massive warranty issues that were a constant fight to get resolved. Um, and I just... And so it's, it's a really weird situation because we put so much of ourselves into the boat and we've all worked so hard on the boat that we've got no interest in selling it 